Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. A lot to talk about this week. We've got cold and snow in the west. We've got that heading to the east with some frost and freezes on our way. And we've obviously got uh, soon to be Hurricane uh, Michael headed for the North Gulf here and some other exciting news here. And we're going to even talk about our winter outlook again and a little more detail on our snow outlook for, uh, for this coming winter. Real quick on Tropical Storm Michael again, probably going to be in a hurricane by, uh, by this morning here, uh, according to the Hurricane Center. All the model guidance pretty much takes it into a Cat 1, Cat 2. A couple take it up into the Cat 3 major category, but uh, right now the official consensus from the Hurricane Center is a strong Cat 1 to Cat 2, um, heading for the uh, panhandle of Florida here midweek, uh, probably by Wednesday. Model guidance is, I don't want to say relatively tight, but it's pretty certain, obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make landfall in the panhandle of Florida, probably most closely to uh, Apalachicola, Tallahassee area here by Wednesday. Um, looking at the ocean temperatures, plenty warm enough uh, for Michael. Again, 84 degree in its path. Uh, see it here, 84 degree, typically above 78. We got more than enough energy, water energy here for the, the hurricane to develop. Um, again, in terms of anomalies, it's above average, and it gets closer to the coast here. We're talking way above average water temperature, so that's very concerning. Um, looking at the official um, storm surge potential, this takes the track, assuming the track is over here toward Wednesday afternoon toward Apalachicola just to the west of Tallahassee. It puts this area again in that right front quadrant. Notice if you're on the other side of the hurricane, the storm surge is not that bad. But if you're on the right side here, the storm surge is always pretty catastrophic. Um, so unfortunately, this does look to be a, a pretty decent storm surge, to say the least. We're looking at a 10 to 12 foot uh, storm surge here in this uh, Apalachicola Bay area just to the south of Tallahassee. So this is if this track holds here, again, model guidance is way over here toward Fort Walton Beach all the way over to Cross City. but. Right now, the consensus is right here toward the toward the Apalachicola. Again, this bay configuration here like this, this concave bay configuration, just allows the water to pile up in here. So always very concerning with that. So God bless you folks. Wednesday's your, your day. So time to, to get out of, uh, out of harm's way. Looking at the wave heights, we can see that they're uh, upwards of 25 to 30 feet uh, just off of the, probably not on the coast. But again, so we've got to take that 10 to 12 foot storm surge and then put 15 to 20 foot waves on top of that. So you're talking about a two-story high wall of water coming into, um, again, just to the to the right of the center here. So uh, very concerning here for the folks in Apalachicola. Fortunately, it's not a huge population area, but again, uh, uh, concerning nonetheless for folks on the coastline. Looking at this week overall, so this is high temperatures versus average. It's been very, very cold, obviously. Uh, second cold is in 30-some years out here in the west in the plains. So still way above below normal temperatures. Uh, they'll get some moderation here this week. Uh, still on the warm side of the cold front here, but you can see this cold front is going to head our way. So uh, get used, get, don't get used to the warm weather here on the east coast. U.S. overall is the coldest in six years for this period this week, 8 through 14 October. That makes it the ninth coldest of the past 30 years, so kind of below average national trend. Uh, it's again wet. Uh, this tropical system obviously is going to make it very wet again in the in the east and areas that really don't want rain. Unfortunately, it's going to track through uh, through the Carolinas, um, so they don't. You know, it's not going to stall like um, Florence did, but uh, still looking at a ton of rain here um, along the east coast and even some heavy rain out there in Kansas. Again, wettest in 30 plus years. If we look at the snow cover here this morning, uh, again the snow cover in the U.S. is about 4.9 percent, uh, mostly in the Rockies and parts of the North Dakota area. That's the most in seven years. Average would only be about 1.6 percent snow cover. If we look at the bigger picture here for North America as a whole, counting all of Canada and Alaska, uh, North America snow cover is off the charts. It's 37 percent above average, the most in 52 years. Uh, so that's telling us something here when we talk about our winter outlook, which we've already discussed uh, previously, but we'll recap it again um, here in a few minutes. But 37% above average, uh, that's the most, again, 52 years for snow cover across Canada, Alaska, and the U.S. So sign of things to come uh, certainly lays the groundwork for, um, for cold winter. Looking at this, this is the uh, snow forecast here, actually, for the next four days. We can see the system moving out of the Rockies. It moves a little bit into the plains. Uh, maybe some heavier snow to the west of Fargo, North Dakota, and then passing north of Duluth. So, again, a quick little system here, uh, laying down some snowpack. <clears throat> Definitely a sign of <clears throat> excuse me, winter to come. Uh, as we get uh, as this cold front does sweep off the east coast here Friday, we do think we're going to have our some frost potential uh, through the Ohio Valley. Can certainly get some 30s. So this is certainly the the first decent chance of frost here on Saturday morning uh, across the Ohio Valley and, and interior northeast. Probably not for the big cities for sure. Looking at next week, 15 through 21 October, it's uh, again, see that cold there has moved to the east, south, and east. So uh, these are high temperatures, much below average uh, from Texas into the into the east coast. Uh, overall, the U.S. would be the coldest in five years for this mid-October period, and that's the 10th coldest in 30 years. Fortunately, we dry out a bit uh, for the country as a whole. It's the 12th driest in 30 years. So again, kind of below average trend here with the heavy rain, the pack northwest, uh, maybe um, 
South Texas, uh, South Florida, the wet spots. Next week, we actually have to worry about our first potential freeze uh, through much of the potential Ohio Valley, certainly Appalachians and interior from the big cities. Uh, even the big cities, though, are certainly going get, to get into the 30s here as we get into the middle of next week. So this is a pretty strong cold front coming through. Uh, this is about on time to get this first uh, frost and freeze. Uh, so again, if you've got tender plants out there, you definitely want to bring these in. Uh, now, some exciting news here. On Thursday, we will be going live on uh, DirecTV and iDish, I think, Earl Farm TV. Uh, at 1.30 Eastern Time here on Thursday. So we're going to be talking about our winter outlook. So we thought we'd give you a uh, quick teaser here again. We talked about some of this before, but we'll just recap it. So these are our winter temperature outlooks, coldest in five years, six coldest in 30 years. Uh, we think there's going to be a dual jet stream type pattern with a, a weak central-based El Nino pattern. So you get a subtropical jet stream across the south and a polar jet stream across the north. So this this area in the high valley is the, is the real cold spot. And this area may be cooler than last year, but... Uh, Again, above average in this ridge area in here, but uh, interesting battleground when you have these two jet streams uh, merging like that. So overall for the winter, we'd have it the coldest in five years. Again, six coldest in 30 years for the nation as a whole. Last year was slightly below average, and for the winter overall, this year is even colder. So cold winter to come. Uh, looking at rainfall here, again, we see that uh, eighth wettest in 30 years and wetter than last year. So, um, you know, along the East Coast, this is kind of a, a nor'easter type pattern scenario here. So this is the... This is the kind of winter where you can actually get some of the, the bigger nor'easter snowstorm potential uh, across the east coast. So again, uh, going to be an exciting winter to say the least for folks that actually do like cold and snow. Uh, looking at, again, precip for the U.S. overall, again, eighth wettest in 30 years. Haven't shown this map here, but uh, clients have seen it, but uh, this is our snowfall outlook. Uh, these are actually snowfall trends versus average. Uh, so we're looking at way above average snowfall here in a band from uh, Kansas all the way into the mid-Atlantic. May not be as bad in New England as it was last year. Um, pockets of some in the higher elevation here, but uh, generally more average. Um, really think this storm track combined with the you know subtropical jet stream here is going to create some pretty interesting snowstorms here and then obviously as they regenerate off the East Coast uh, for the mid-Atlantic as well. Um, Kansas City hasn't had a big snowy winter in many, many, many years. Uh, five, six, seven plus years. So this will be uh, exciting for them and again probably exciting in the major cities, the southern part of, of New England. So again, overall, we'd have the U.S. the snowiest in five years and eighth snowiest in 30 years. Uh, again, so this shows the national trends. Again, snowiest in five. Good chance we're going to rival these, some of these big years uh, back in history here. So it's going to be an interesting winter, to say the least. Uh, we will be talking, uh, again, all of this on RFT TV here on Thursday at 1.30 Eastern Time. We'll be talking about FarmCast, a product that we actually offer to our farmers. Uh, helps them uh, near term, short term, uh, year ahead. Uh, so pretty much uh, anything a farmer can think of, this report typically uh, addresses those questions. So with that, folks, uh, have a great week. We have some very stormy weather ahead, and uh, we'll be back here this time next week.